and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa, and today we're going to be discussing hydrocolloid dressings. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel reach more people. So let's get started, guys. So what is a hydrocolloid wound dressing? So these dressings are wafers, powders, or paste, and they're composed of gelatin, pectin, and carboxymethyl cellulose. Absorption capabilities really depend on the thickness and composition of the dressing. Wafers are self-adherent and available with or without an adhesive border and in wide varieties of shapes and sizes. These are useful in areas that do require contour, such as the heel and sacrum. Powders and pastes do require a secondary dressing, and they're, in, and they're indicated for partial and full thickness wounds with or without necrotic tissue. These dressings do gel up upon contact with wound exudates, and it provides a moist wound healing environment and does provide auto to bride. Now let's go over the features of hydrocolloids. So they are non-adherent to moist wound beds, okay? So this is great because they'll stick really well around the peri wound, but they're not going to actually stick to the wound bed itself. They are water resistant, imperma in, impermeable to bacteria, gases, water, water vapor, and any other external contaminants. They are self-adherent. They're moldable, so you can mold them into um, areas that are kind of really hard to put a dressing on. They can be used under compression. They maintain moisture by gelling on contact with exudate. They can be worn anywhere from one to seven days and can be cut to fit the wound. So when do we use a hydrocolloid? So we use them as either a primary primary or secondary dressing, as I just stated, because the powders or paste do need a secondary dressing. So they are used in the treatment of lightly to moderately exudating partial to full thickness wounds, such as dermal ulcers, skin tears, lacerations, pressure ulcers, or wounds with necrotic tissue or slough, because it does provide that autolytic debride. So what are the contraindications for hydrocolloids? So hydrocolloid dressings are generally contraindicated for burns or dry wounds, wounds with heavy exudate, tunneling wounds or sinus tracts, infected wounds with exposed tendon or bone, wounds with fragile peri wound tissue, because this does stick to the peri wound, it sticks very, very well, okay? So it does go right up to the edge, um, the borders of the actual wound. Um, so if we do have fragile peri wound tissue, we wouldn't want to be using them. And there are are some hydrocolloid dressings that are contraindicated on use of full thickness um, wounds. So we do just want to keep that in mind um, and always read your specific directions for the specific hydrocolloid that treat. So there are just some general warnings about hydrocolloids. Um, so that's what we're going to go over now. So it may leave a residue on the wound bed. It may encourage hypertrophic granulation. It may cause maceration of the peri wound skin. The patient may be at a higher risk for anaerobic infection. It does limit gas exchange between the wound bed and the environment. It may injure fragile skin upon removal. So when you go to remove these, be super, super careful. Always hold the tissue, um, the patient's tissue and pull up and keep holding it because it does with the warmth, it does really, really stick. So it does create this awesome barrier, but it sticks very, very well. And there may present an odor on dressing chain, which you got to be really careful because it sometimes is confused for infection and it is just the smell of the hydrocolloid. So um, after you've been doing wound care for a while and you have been using these products, you can almost smell the difference um, of the hydrocolloid, but it is often confused with infection. So if you think that it is infection um, and you go to a different product and the smell isn't there, you'll know that it is the hydrocolloid. So that's all that I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful. And just like I said earlier, once you know all the different main categories, so hydrocolloids, alginates, um, once you know the main categories, it's not so confusing because some some new nurses, um, they get so caught up in the different product names and the different brands. But if you know what the actual product is, you can really go to any facility, use any 
different types of wounds as long as, okay, this is an alginate. Oh, this is a mesh dressing. If you know what they are meant to do and the main outline of them, you can really use any product and know what the function of it is, when you should be using it, when you shouldn't. So I hope you did find this helpful and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye for now.